Hey everybody, how's it going? So today I decided to use, don't know if you can see that in there, <laughs> uh, one of the mugs that was sent to Sarah um, a little over four months ago. It's chilly out. It was all stormy today, rainy and windy and like pretty much all the leaves are gone now. I didn't notice that before. So I don't know if that happened overnight <clears throat> with the storm or just in general, but like, it's pretty crazy. No, I can see some apples on my apple tree. Um, so people have asked about how the kiddos are doing. So I wanna do a kiddo update. Um, that's gonna be the second part of this video. <coughs> this cough won't go away, so excuse me and I apologize. Um, and the first part of this video is gonna be how I'm noticing my grief changing. Um, because after getting home yesterday, was it yesterday, the day before yesterday, um, I've just been very aware that the way that I'm grieving, the way that I'm feeling inside has, has changed significantly, um, whether I'm going or not. So typically if I'm moving, 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 um, my feelings have been just kind of I don't want to say dulled, but my mind has been busy, and so I've been uh, not not um, feeling as sad. And then yesterday, I was really noticing. You guys saw, and I talked about like coming back and just starting to feel um, a much different lack of Sarah's presence. Like really feeling that her presence is gone. Um, and that, that um, having that person there to talk to is gone. The rush of life um, and its ability to be distracting, I guess, seems to be gone. Um, and it's kind of like a reality train just <laughs> plowing through. And, and it sucks. I have a, a friend from one of our groups, one of the groups that I do, uh, that's also, you know, similar amount of time, similar situation, similar type of death. And, uh, and they were noticing kind of the same. So we're kind of at the same timeline. Uh, and they're noticing kind of a, like similar. That's my word for the day, similar. They're noticing the same changes. Uh, in, in how they're feeling and uh, we both have a the same kind of mindset of moving forward living our best life and and taking care of our kiddos and, and that kind of stuff um, and so when they were saying that this is starting to hit them in a different way it was kind of surreal because um, it's hitting me in a different way now as well and I understand that there's stages of grief and, and I also know that those stages of grief were um, studied and built for people that were in more like Sarah's situation where they are going to die and, and going through those stages of grief in a, in a I guess a linear sort of way um, with the expectation of dying. Uh, they weren't studied necessarily for people grieving the deaths of their other people. And so I don't believe we follow that linear path, but um, it changes. And people say waves, and I love the term waves because that's, that's legit how it is. Like all of a sudden you're just smashed by a wave um, of grief, of feelings, of thoughts. Um, sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they're sad. And, and it's all feelings that we just kind of deal with. Um, but I think the, the big thing that's happening is I've got these feelings now that are sticking around when I'm busy even. And it's, it's not so much thoughts. It's literally like physical sometimes, just um, that longing, that desire, that, you know, and I don't mean it like in a sexual way, that desire to be with your person or, 
or talk to them or and so there's the physical manifestations of those and how your body physically feels and so I'm figuring that out and it's it's a new experience and it sucks but just like everything else that I've done thus far I'm really trying to lean into it and let it happen I'm not trying to avoid it I'm trying to let it happen so I can be in it and move through it and grow from it and I think keeping the same mindset that I've had of owning my grief and letting it be and not letting people's judgments stop me or letting my own fear stop me from going through these feelings I think that's all gonna stick true and hold true it's just kind of now I'm trying to figure out how do I pivot myself my mind uh, what I'm doing and all of that stuff in order to not push it away but to get through and to to be present for my kids and to be mindful of what they need and mindful of what I need. So it's a it's an adjustment. It's a big adjustment. Um, being able to own those feelings and work through them while doing life at the same time. Because while life has been able to distract really well, I think that's going away um, as a new realization sets in. And so I'm figuring that out. And I still have my bereavement counselor that I'll be talking to. And I don't think it's seasonal. I just think it's the reality of how I'm approaching my grief and how I'm approaching the sadness and all the other feelings that come with it. Um, and then I've also had a lot of thoughts of work coming up. And um, I think my next vlog, I think I'm gonna do one tomorrow again. And I think that's gonna be talking about work because I start back to work on Monday and my, my leave ends. And so I'm gonna talk about that a little bit tomorrow and how that plays a part in all of this as well. So yeah. It's hard. All right. By the way, I appreciate everybody's comments on my post about how you find your own comfort when you're dealing with your hard times. Um, I know we all need to find our own ways, but as we share with each other, we learn new things that might help that we may not have thought of. And I know my brain with grief, and I know a lot of other people's brains are broke <laughs> and, and scattered and forgetful. And, and there's things that we used to know or we used to do that we forgot made us feel good and happy. And so as we share ideas with each other, it helps us remember some of those things. Um, even as simple as looking at pictures. I know that I've talked to people that have been like, I forgot that I had pictures of my person that I could just look at because I put them away so long ago because it hurt too bad. And so maybe now it's time to go back to those pictures and try again and push through those feelings. Yeah. So thank you for all of your comments on that because it's really helpful. Um, so if you're looking for something to comment on this video, I'm curious for those of you guys that have lost anybody, and I shouldn't say lost because they can't be found, that has, has had anybody important to them die. Doesn't have to be a partner. Um, when you noticed things changing and how you're feeling, how did you approach that? And was it harder? Was it easier? You know, when, when those changes happen, what, what was it like for you? So share that down in the comments and I'll be reading them because I'm curious as I go through this transition. Because um, advice sometimes is, 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 is definitely welcome. When, when things are changing, it's, it's interesting to hear how people deal with change. And, uh, and we all have our different ways, which is why I share. All right. 
kiddos. My kiddos, and I think kids in general, are some of the most resilient creatures in the world. Um, one of the discussions I had, one of the last Dougie groups that I did, and it, it's parents only, but we were talking about movies. And anybody that's watched Disney movies since Little Mermaid came out on VHS knows that a parent dies in pretty much every single uh, movie. Finding Nemo and Lion King, I think, are the most traumatic. Lion King being the first movie I cried in. Anyway. This idea of these movies is to show how resilient kids are. Because when we turn those movies on and we're watching our kids, because we know what's about to happen and they may or may not remember, we are bracing for devastation when Nemo's mom dies. And then Nemo's mom dies and the kids are fully engaged in the movie and they react to the death as they would in a movie. <gasps> oh my gosh, what's next? <laughs> While we are panicking inside that we're about to have to take the next three hours calming our kids down from a breakdown, which we don't mind the snuggles, right? But the snuggles during the movie without the breakdown, probably better. Anywho, they, they watch that part and they move on. And that's kids. Kids are resilient. They're in the now and less back there and up in the future. And I think it's awesome because it teaches us as adults that it, it's possible and it can be done. And so I think the movie is a good example just because we get worked up. I know anytime I see something that has to do with a parent dying or a death in general, um, I, get, I get a little worked up. My heart rate starts going and I start worrying about how my kids are going to react because I want to make sure they're okay. And... Uh, 99.9% .9 of the time, I made that percentage up, they're just fine. On occasion, they'll ask questions or they'll, they'll make a comment about mom, but um, they're good. And Rayla talks about her mom all the time, everywhere we go. Sometimes as if she's right there, sometimes it's just uh, what mommy used to love, um, whether she knew it or not. She's like, mommy loved that road. I'm like, what? <laughs> And uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It keeps me present. It keeps me aware. It keeps me right there um, in the now. And I, and I absolutely love that. Um, both kids are doing well. Um, Brayden does Dougie group and has a, some support people at school and some great supports at school through his teachers and whatnot. And so he's, uh, He's got the supports he needs if and when he wants them. We just had progress reports and, and parent-teacher conferences. and Every single teacher uh, just had so much to say about how kind he's doing, how well he's doing academically, but the focus on how kind he's doing. Without being asked, he asked a teacher if he could help another student because he noticed the other student was struggling. Um, and as a parent, <laughs> you couldn't ask for anything better than that. Um, growing up, we had, you know, our school and our letter grades and blah, 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 blah. And I knew as a parent that when it came to grades, I wasn't going to care what my kids' grades are. And I don't. What I care about is that they're trying their hardest and that they're being good humans. And that was, hi, hummingbird. That was something that Sarah and I were very passionate about and shared, that it's not about that end outcome. It's about what you do to get there and what kind of human you're being as you get there. And what's beautiful is Braden's not struggling academically. He's right on par. He's made a lot of progress and caught up a lot in sixth grade which with everything going on with his mom dying, I was expecting his progress to be low. 
And I was expecting that kindness level to be high <laughs> because that's he's got his mom's heart. And so Brayden is doing absolutely wonderful. And um, I call both of my kids anomalies um, because the way that they're doing things is just different than you would expect after going through such a traumatic event. Brayden's school is doing better than it should be. He has every reason to not be doing well in school and he's killing it. And he's being such a beautiful human that um, I do, I'm just, I'm not surprised, but I'm amazed. And Rayla's doing her thing. She gets in trouble at school a little bit, but she also has resources at the ready if we need and if her behavior starts changing or if she has any extra struggles. But I think we as a family are really sticking together really, really well. And Amelia is doing really well. She's working, um, her kitty's sick right now, so she's struggling a little bit. And I think off the backs of our other two cats dying, um, she's really worried. He's uh, having some kidney failure, so he's at the vet, trying to give him fluids, trying to figure it out. And uh, he's pretty darn young, so she's really worried and kind of down and eh. But um, hopefully he'll pull through. Uh, coming off the deaths of Raven and Juniper, it's really, really kind of scary and sad. And so we're, we're all hoping that that works out for her and for him, for her kitty. But um, it's Smokey. He's the one that you might have seen in some of the videos climbing up over us in the pergola over there. But um, she's working. She's working hard. This is going to be a busy, busy time of year for her. So she's going to have to step it up and work really hard this uh, winter. And I'm excited to see her progress as she does that. And she really enjoys her job. And um, she has been working hard and, and doing her part to, to you know, move forward through all of these hard times. Yeah, so that's, that's it. That's what's going on, you guys. This is a pretty long update. So I appreciate it. If you made it this far, thank you. <laughs> um, I'll do another update about uh, what's going on with me and work because <laughs> that's coming up so so soon. I'm really nervous, but I have a positive outlook because my team's amazing. So that is everything for now. Hopefully I didn't mumble too much and talk too quietly, but have a wonderful day, morning, night, wherever you are. Remember, be kind, make good choices, and cheers.